It's spoiler in time, the show where we, the Cord Killers hosts, have had the time to figure out what to watch, watched it, and talk about it. And this week, we're going to talk about Extras, Episode 2 of Season 1, and Chernobyl, Season 1, Episode 3. I'm Tom Merritt, and that man right there that is breathing in your left ear is Brian Brushley. <laughs> yes, indeed. Welcome to our AM's ASMR cast. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, no, no, try it. Oh, hell yeah. Well, hello there, listeners. It's <laughs> so good to see you. what time is it, Brian? I mean, I'm just a bit out of breath. I, I had to run up the stairs. Okay, then we're right, going to throw some people <laughs> way off of this stuff. So. Uh, hey, man, you want to check in on the Summer Movie Draft? I I do. I do. I'm very happy for one thing. Not very happy for another. Uh, Aladdin hit top 300 million. That's great. Uh, it's what I needed. John Wick's at 161 million. I'm all good about that. Dark Phoenix is still down there at 63 million. Oh boy. So um, all my hopes for second place are on the Lion King. Uh, Frog Pants Avengers Endgame only at 100, 841 million with the re-release. Uh, didn't didn't rake in the dough. Toy Story 4 still won the weekend. Uh, Toy Story 4, of course, team John Trekkers, and they are now at 236 million with that, with 663 million in the bank and it chapter two left to come. Yeah, so that puts us. Uh, oh, how much of a boost did Endgame get from its re-release? Re-release? Not much. Yeah. Uh, like 10 million it seemed what? like. What? Oh man, it's gonna is it gonna fail to to surpass Avatar? No, it looks like it's gonna pass Avatar because it'll be in the theaters for a couple more weeks. Uh it, it's probably got just enough steam to do that, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna pad out Team Frog Pants that much. Yeah. Uh meanwhile, man, John Trekker, I, I guess they they don't have that far to go. Seems like it chapter two could do two hundred million on its own, and of course Toy Story, Story, Toy Story 4 has at least another 40 or 50 million in the bank. Both of those, yeah. Uh, Spider Man Far From Home comes out tomorrow. Uh, Reviews sound even pretty Even though good. it's Jul July 5th, it's coming out on a Tuesday because of July 4th. So that'll give Grant a little money in the bank before we even get to the weekend. And that, I think, is Team Beerus' last movie, is certainly their biggest movie. Yeah, where's that going to put Team Beerists? They're going to end up uh, uh, next to last place. Uh, right where they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially because the Lion King comes out two weeks after that. Yeah. So uh, like they, I don't not... think that's enough. Spider-Man Far From Home could certainly catch Team Sword and Laser, but probably not before the Lion King comes out and then jets us back up. Yeah, maybe maybe if it's a smash hit and makes 300 million, good luck, uh, then Night they can surpass us, Team Night Attack. The reviews are apparently quite good for yeah. Spider-Man. I'm, I'm excited. Sounds good. I, I am disappointed that uh, I was all primed by the pitch for yesterday to go out and see it the moment it came out. And then I saw those Rotten Tomato reviews and I was like, ooh, yeah. maybe I won't. Uh, I, Eileen saw it in preview and told me it's really enjoyable. You don't need to go to the theater to see it. And I think that's I think that's what happened is people are like, OK, this is the movie I expected you to make, which isn't good enough. I wanted you to surprise me. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we get to the spoiling, uh, we got a little bit of triage. Norm from Visalia, go Oaks, says, hey, guys, I wanted to thank you so much for watching The Office UK. The second part of the Christmas special left me feeling better than the first part. I know David can be grating, but seeing him stand up for his date to Chris, even after his disgusting antics with his other dates, hopefully shows David is maturing. Like Brian, I look forward to extras because Gervais plays at wanting fame so much better there. Spoiler alert. I can't wait to get to the, should I say this? Uh, yeah, this is a spoiler because I don't remember this. Uh, okay. But uh, he can't wait to get to the thing. But mostly, thank you for skipping the David Brent special. I had zero desire to watch that. I'll hope that David Brent has matured and living a better version of his life. But I don't think Gervais would have realized that on film. Keep on keeping on. Thank you, Norm. Yeah, dude, uh, having said that, I'm really excited to be continuing on extras, but wait, we'll get to that in a bit. For now, wait, what do we want to start with? Uh, should we go right into Chernobyl? Is yeah, that, is I think that so. Good? Uh, and then we can cheer ourselves up after that with, with extras. Uh, yeah, episode three of Chernobyl. Uh, and I guess what we only have two more episodes left, right? It's five episodes? That's right. Is there only about? five episodes? That's wow. Right. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, it's hard to see those people, even knowing that they're not really 
dying from radiation, uh, which I think is the point, right? They they wanted to show you that this this was the effect that they had on people. I feel like in a way this episode is here are all the stages of people affected by radiation. Uh, and they even have a bit where he explains, well, we will just have DNA uh, mutations that will lead to cancer someday and die. Uh, people who were close in and picked up the graphite, they're melting away and their internal organs are melting in the hospital and you actually get to get to see that. And then other people have varying levels of pain and agony in between. Yeah, although I must admit, uh, the gruesome horror show notwithstanding, I mean, yes, they did a great job of pointing the uh, portraying the horrors of being on, uh, on the ground floor of a of a meltdown. Um, I am was mainly engaged in. Uh, first of all, I loved all of the scenes with the coal miners right from the introduction to them, where they say, "Hey, you're going to do what we say," but they are so aloof and so sequestered from the rest of society, and so important that that you know to see him openly defy uh, a member of the party and to uh, speak so callously to the two soldiers was remarkable, and then. For them to understand completely exactly the severity of what they're up to and to commit themselves to the task completely right down to the like, we're not going to wear any of the protective anything. We all both know the score here. You want us to get it done as fast as possible. That's what we're going to do. Uh, I, I thought all of that was wonderful. I, I did appreciate that the reminder and even though this part was totally fictitious, but the reminder that this is a police state that everybody lives in and the arrest of of our amalgam of all the researchers and then uh, subsequent release. I think that's important to remind us of exactly what chess games are afoot during all of this catastrophe. Uh, I, I thought it was really, really good. I, I was not as horrified as you guys by the uh, by the, the blood and gut stuff. Yeah, I, well, the blood gut stuff was horrifying, but I also uh, loved the coal miners bit. And in the extra, uh, they talk about how the coal miners didn't have to play by the rules in the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union was powered by coal. And so if the coal miners didn't do their job, the Soviet Union fell apart, which gave them that bravado. They knew their position of like, well, what are you going to do without us? Uh, that said they could have used that leverage to just dig in their heels and say, well, we're not going to go to Chernobyl. Uh, so it is, there is a nobility to what they did because it felt like without stating it, they decided to do it anyway. They decided to do it because they knew it was the right thing to do for the planet. Uh, and, and they didn't get flowery about it because they're coal miners and they didn't want to, but yeah, I, I, I loved that no nonsense characterization of them uh, and, and, and such a lovely counterpoint to the ideal of communism as represented by what you said with the KGB and how you play the game of like, well, she, she spoke out of turn, but if you need her and you'll warrant for her, then we'll let her out. Uh, and the reality of actual workers <laughs> being the coal miners, uh, exercising their workers rights, uh, to do the right thing is, it, it was an interesting juxtaposition. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you, I I have a special place in my heart for that moment of genuine fear that struck through me like a lightning bolt when, you know, obviously very upset. Um, uh, at, at, wait, what was her name? Emily Watson? Yeah. That's uh, at, the yeah. When, when Emily Watson says, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell everyone. And then there's, there's just this moment like, you tell everyone what? And then all of a sudden you just feel so this. You feel your stomach drop out, and it's like, well, how do you even? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, tell and everyone the way what? that uh, that actor played that line perfectly because it wasn't tell everyone what it was. Tell everyone what? Yeah, but like so calm and so friendly, even though you know there is nothing friendly about what he's saying. Like <sighs> just chilling. Yeah. Yeah, uh, continuing to enjoy it. Uh, I enjoyed the. It was kind of almost played. I felt like for comic relief with them working naked, you know, just for the shock surprise in that. But mm. uh, but, but it, it brought a moment of small world, uh, uh, small world issues, you know, colored with a bit of heroism that I think was desperately needed with all the heavy stuff of watching. Well, and when you're talking melt. about radiation, uh, a lot of people immediately jump to sterilize it like, oh, if I get hit with radiation, does that mean I can't have kids? And so I, th I think that was also on display. Uh, and they, he said, well, now you're less protected. And again, I, I love the bluntness of will it make any difference? And the very good advice of 
just be honest with them because they'll see through your BS and him saying, mm, no, not really. I'm like, great. Then we'll take not, you know, sweating to death uh, over a slight bit of useless protection. Yeah. Yeah. And the advice to be real kind of came full circle at that with the last question from the miners, right? Like, are you going to ah. take care of these guys? And, and the comrade says, maybe, which is like, no, they're absolutely not. Well, he says, like, I don't know. Oh, does he say, uh, I don't know? I thought it was... he says, I don't know. Oh. Like, it was so like brutally. Honest. Yeah, like, yeah. like a, okay. a, a, never, a, a, a BS and answer yeah. would have been like, we will do our best or, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah, instead, yeah. it's just like, can't even say the like, yeah. it's Russian. Not... What do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Soviet Russia, they, <laughs> something, something you. Is it, yeah. Russia forgets you. It is. It is worth remembering that uh, you know that uh, I read some article that explained like the sign as they're going in. Says, yeah, they didn't translate that. Uh, well, uh, apparently, it is a perfect reproduction of the actual sign that uh, was there that said, "Comrades, we have to get this far in." Uh, and 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 we will work 24 seven. So for all of of our assumption in the West that nobody really believed the do it for Mother Russia, like they were feeling it in that moment. They were mm. they were the 9-11 firefighters running in to the fire and and yeah. and they knew they were sacrificing themselves in that moment. So uh, I, I don't know. I thought all of that was really, really precious and well, well depicted. Yeah, yeah, I've agreed. All right, uh, for a palate cleanser, uh, let's talk about extras 102, Ross Kemp and Vinny Jones. Yeah, I didn't know who either of these guys were, so... It had oh, you didn't recognize Vinny Jones? You've never seen, like, the Guy Ritchie movies he's been in? Oh, you know like what? I, you're right. I guess, I guess, uh, wait, was he Bullet Tooth Tony? I don't remember if he's Bullet Tooth Tony, but he is he is a bulletproof type Tony kind of character. Okay, yeah. Beatmaster is saying yes. Uh, that means okay. he also did my favorite CPR uh, uh, PSA uh, in all of history. It's really great. Uh, uh, look it up if you have the chance. But uh, uh, I, I, another great episode. Really excited to be visiting this series. How where are you at it, Tom? Oh, it was just, it was a joy. I and I did I I actually liked. That it was, okay, we're going to follow the same beats as the last episode with different people, different results in some cases. But, you know, Ricky Gervais's character is going to try to get a line and it'll be a different way that he doesn't get a line. Uh, and that was enjoyable. And then, of course, she's going to have a love interest and there'll be a different way that she screws up that love interest. Uh, and I, I was like, I can't wait to see how she screws it up this time. And I think that's going to be a recurring uh, a enjoyable bit for me. Yeah, I I got to tell you, I don't remember if it ever deviates from this plan, but I seem to remember for sure in the first season that it really is just all these same beats. And it's surprising to say it, but like, I don't know, like a, like, like a good techno song or something, can't wait to just keep hearing the same four bars over and over and over again. Well, it, and, and the, the joy of it is I can already tell that it's going to be a different, interesting way to hit that beat every time. That's what's fun. If it was the same beat the same way every time, then yeah, I'd be like, okay, this this is this is dumb. This is soap opera uh, formulaic. But I, I, I do believe coming is... up with a clever way, like, oh, is this gonna be the guy? Oh, how's she gonna screw it up? Oh, is this gonna be who he, he's gonna go after? Ross Kemp. I guess he's gonna try to get the line from Ross Kemp. And how's that gonna play out? How's it gonna fail? Because with Ben Stiller, it was. Ben Stiller putting the kibosh and saying, no, I'm not going to give the line to you anymore. And in this case, it was Vinnie Jones intimidating Ross Kemp and Ross Kemp realized, just admitting, like, I never would have been able to get you a line. I, I didn't have that kind of leverage. Well, what's funny is he says, so if you're just hanging around because you think you're going to get a line. And then and then what's great is, is you know, Ricky Gervais is like, anyway, peace out. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it was really, really fun. Uh, really enjoying extras. It, it's telling that I watched extras on Tuesday last week and Chernobyl on Sunday. Yep. Uh, <laughs> one was homework. The, the other was candy. <laughs> I mean, it's not that Chernobyl is homework and that I don't enjoy watching it once I get going, but it's like, who do I want to watch melting people right now or funny Ricky Gervais? Like, <laughs> you know, it just depends on the mood you're in, I guess. Uh, that is it for us. Thanks for hanging out with us and uh, supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cord Killers is the place to go uh, to hear Spoiler in Time early, get uh, special exclusive content from Brian Bryce and myself, uh, and just generally make sure that we're continuing to be able to do the show. Patreon.com slash Cord Killers. We'll talk to you next week. Ah!
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>